In today's video, we're going to be painting up a human rogue from the Dungeons & Dragons WizKids line. Okay, so to start things off with this miniature, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off with some neutral flesh from uh, Vallejo here. And the good thing about these models is they're already pre-primed, so we don't need to worry about that. So we can move straight into painting up our uh, skin tone, which we want to give a nice... Uh, even coat, nice thin coat as well, because I do water uh, down my paints just a little bit with some water so we can flow the paint into the, the cracks and the recesses nice and easily. So I always like to do that, wait for the first coat to dry, and then I come over with a second coat as well. So that's what I'll be doing to all the areas that I'll be painting up in the video. Okay, so once we have all the skin painted up, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be coming in with some ivory. Now ivory is just an off-colored white. And we're going to be using this to be painting in our rogue's eyes here. Now I've got a nice a thin brush, as you can see, with a finish tip. And I'm just trying to get into those eye socket areas. Now, I'm not perfect at this. I still need a lot of practice. This is why I'm painting up a bunch of miniatures with eyes. And I'm really trying to focus in on those eyes so I can get in there. Okay, so now I have the eye sockets painted up. What I'm going to be doing is using some black paint now. And I'm going to be using the black paint, of course, to be doing the uh, pupils of the eyes. And I'm just going to be using a safety pin here to uh, use the very fine point on that with just a dab of paint. And I'm just going to be touching it to the eye uh, carefully. It takes a steady hand. It's going to take a little while. And I'm not exactly perfect at it yet. Um, but I'm still trying between this technique here, uh, using a pin to dot in the eyes and using an actual brush. I do want to get confident enough with an actual brush for sometimes. Uh, I find it a little bit hard and I gotta use this pin which gives a, a lot quicker effect a lot faster. So this is just a nice easy way to get in the eyes quickly. Okay, so now we have those eyes painted in. What we're gonna do now is moving on with some dirt spatter. And we're using the dirt spatter for our hair of our rogue here. So now he also has a nice uh, beard and facial hair sculpted into him as well. So we wanna make sure we get that and I'm just coming in with the tip of my brush here and just lightly placing it on in very uh, small strokes to really pick out that hair detail. So just make sure you have a steady hand, as steady as you can get, and really try. But the good thing is we're still in the base coating stage, so you can come back over and paint any areas where we have a little bit of mistakes. And of course we want to paint up the actual hair of the rogue as well. Okay, so now we have all the hair painted up. What we're doing now is coming in with some Cavalry Brown. And we're using the Cavalry Brown to be using for the uh, base color of his uh, coat that he's wearing, or jacket, I should say, um, that we want to get here. So he has a lot of layers in this very small area of the miniature. So this is why we're starting off with the Cavalry Brown, which is going to be our bottommost layer first, and then we'll work up to the top layers. So we're not trying to fight in between all the belts and straps and other bits of detail onto this so giving a nice coat to all of his uh, base jacket here okay so now with his jacket complete what we're going to be doing now is coming back in with some ivory and we're we'll using ivory to be painting in his uh, shirt he has a shirt underneath his jacket that he's wearing and i'm going to be painting it in white now it's going to be a little bit hard to see on this miniature because it's already pre-primed in a very light gray which is very similar to the ivory color but uh, just be sure that i'm um, painting it at uh, with thin down paint so it's going to be a little bit harder to see uh, on camera and I'm just going over in two thin coats in all the areas where you can see here he's got a nice little hood on him as well so don't forget to pick out all those bits of detail okay now with his undershirt completed what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in now with some castle grey and we're going to be using castle grey to be painting up our rogues pants here which is going to be a nice uh, offset of colour I usually do grey for the base um, especially the castle grey here, so I want to switch it up. He's going to have some nicer grey pants because I still want him to be all rogue and sneaky like. So I want him to have a, a lot mute, a lot more muted colours, but still have a variety of colours on him. I don't want him to be flashy and standing out since he's trying to be a sneaky rogue and um, doing colours like this that are a little bit more uh, grounded and muted is going to tie into that theme a lot more. Okay, so now with our pants complete, what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some charred brown. I'm going to be using this charred brown to be painting up the boots of our miniature. So he's got some nice fancy boots on him, so we want to make sure we give a nice good coverage to that. And 
we're using our thin down paint so we can pick out that uh, little bit of raised detail it has on those boots as well so giving them a nice uh, thin coat and making sure for the first layer to dry and then coming over with a second layer to give that nice smooth finish okay so now we have his boots painted up what we're going to be doing now is we're going to move on with some basalt gray and the basalt gray we're going to be using to be painting up his uh, leather army he has on him he has these uh, shoulder pads that go all the way down his arm giving off that really nice uh, rogue-like aesthetic and giving a really cool uh, dynamic sort of armor look to him so we want to pick out that with the basalt gray we also want to uh, pick out all the straps across his chest as well with the same gray making sure that we be very careful with the tip of our brush here making sure that we just catch the um, the parts that we want here but remember if you accidentally do it's okay because we're still in the base coating step so we can come back in a little bit later um, and just touch up those areas okay so now with his armor all painted up we're going to move on now with some leather brown and we'll be using the leather brown to be painting up uh, just this little uh, strap he has across his uh, waist here where he has a, a what do you call it a, a coin purse or a nice uh, belt with a bunch of gear stacked in for as all his roguing needs so we want to make sure we get all of that with the nice uh, brown hair and just being very careful to avoid those other areas that we've already painted as well okay so with that belt painted up what we're doing is coming on some khaki now and we're just going to be using that to be painting up the other pouch uh, pocket he has on him as well he has two so we did one just in the brown same as the uh, belt we did so now we're going to do one in the khaki to give us that bit of variety on the miniature okay so now what we're going to do with our miniature is we're going to use some skeleton bone now and we're going to be using this to be painting up the little dagger he has in his hand uh, because of the actual artwork itself which i'm not following 100 percent i'm using some inspiration from it he actually has a bone dagger and i think that's a really cool idea so i want to uh, do the exact same thing here as well as it's sort of jagged and stuff like a bone but by all means you could make this metal if you wanted to okay so now with this bone dagger complete what we're going to be doing is we're going to use some black now and we'll be using the black to be painting his uh, sword he has in his hand so we want to be covering this in black black is a good base color to have for uh, most metallics here but i'm going to be coming in with a, a cool design well trying to go for a more fancier design than just going with straight metal on the sword anyway and i think uh, switching it up and putting a bit of black on the handle is going to make it stand out a lot more so we just want to cover the whole thing in black there okay so with that complete what we're going to be doing now is we're going to come in now with some gun metal and we're going to be using this to pick out all the metallic parts of course on our miniature so the rogue here actually has uh, these nice little uh, studded dots here on his uh, bit of armor so we want to pick out those as well it's going to be a nice little detail uh, to add on to that as well as we also want to pick out the belt buckles of our miniature which he has a couple of so don't forget to do those as well using the very edge of the brush to uh, pick them out a lot easier than if we were to try put the whole brush in there and of course we want to go with the blade of the miniature as well okay so now we have all that painted up what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some brassy brass and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be picking out a few more details of the miniature so he has these nice uh eye designed on his uh, jacket holding uh, sort of where the buttons are so we want to pick those out with some nice brassy brass to show off his uh, rogue flashness maybe he's stolen them or he just likes to look really cool that he's got these nice fancy um, things holding his jacket up and um, we also want to be painting up uh, there's a little lining around the boots as well and i'm just going to be placing a little bit on the sword too okay so now we have that complete what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off with some flesh wash now since we have all our base layers down and of course for our flesh wash we want to be covering all of the skin so making sure we get that skin in a nice uh, thin coat of the wash just being careful to avoid any pooling in certain areas now i'm not using the flesh wash over our bone dagger we're going to be using a different wash for that as well so keep that in mind too okay so once our flesh wash is completely dry what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some seraphim sepia and we're using seraphim sepia to be coating our bone dagger before so this is why i said we want to avoid the flesh wash we want it to stick out and be different from our flesh and the best way to do that is to use a different wash especially since the skin color and our bone color can be a little bit similar so just doing that to finish that off okay so with our bone dagger complete 
what we'll be doing is we'll be moving on with some known oil and known oil as you know if you watch any of my other videos i love this known oil over anything metallic i just love the effect it gives off so of course i'm going to be adding it to uh, metallics as well but what i'm also going to be doing is adding it to uh, his jacket you uh, his undershirt i should say that you've got here in the white because i want to have some nice deep shadows in here and i don't want to muddy it up by being a brown color i don't want to show it off as dirty i want it to show off more as shadow so this is why i'm going to be doing it over the white area of the miniature as well so don't worry about it too much um we'll come in and we'll fix it later on the step i know it's tainting the color a lot right now but you'll be able to see at the end result okay so with that known oil completely dry what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some agrax earth shade now agrax earth shade we're going to be using pretty much now everywhere that we haven't used a wash before so that's uh where his jacket his boots his pants every everywhere else that we haven't used any of our other washes we want to cover in the agrax earth shade which is going to give them a nice um worn effect on all of that area and really stick out amongst the black parts that we have separated okay so once all those washes are completely dry what we're going to be doing now is coming back in with ivory now this is the part where i said we we covered our miniature in the black wash over all the white parts of the area so coming back in with the ivory now is really going to highlight those parts up really well and it's going to uh, make it come back to full life and all of that known oil will be in that shadow and give it off a realistic sort of effect like he's uh, got those nice deep shadows in those folds and stuff like that okay so now with that highlighted done we're going to come back now with our basalt gray and we're also going to be using this for highlighting so we're going to be highlighting the leather parts we did before in our original basalt gray but since it's been washed down with that known oil coming back in with the basalt gray is really gonna brighten it up and give us that nice effect like the sun's hitting the edge of his armor that we want there as well so taking your time and just using the edge of your brush to catch all those little raised bits and with all that done what we're going to be doing is coming back in with some gunmetal now and we're just going to be picking out those parts that we washed over in the known oil and all those edges so just the very top parts of the belt buckle the the little dots here on the side of leather armor and just the the edge of the blade to really make it stand out um, and like it's shining in the light And with that, we have completed painting up our human rogue from the Dungeons and Dragons Wiz Kids range. Now, I did have a, a pre-made base here, which is just a stone texture on a base. I just gave it a quick paint job, and I thought it would be the right thing to do for this rogue here, looking like he's stealthing through the streets. So, I hope this has been helpful for you, whether you guys want to paint along yourself, or you just enjoy watching me paint up some cool miniatures. But with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.